Well, everybody, welcome to this, um, what I'm going to call special edition of Stormwater Creek. We're, we're, I don't think, we haven't quite done... Halloween edition. Yeah, Do really. <laughs> yeah, thunder. Do -do -do -do. Should add some corny sound effects in. I, uh, yeah, right over this. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I, it was last Friday, I was sitting at the house, yeah, Steph was out of town, so by myself, start looking for stuff to watch on TV, because I watched three things, and we've talked about, I watched Community... The Office and New Girl, like repeatedly. So I found this documentary called The Missing 411, The Hunted. I was like, what is this? I watched the trailer for it, and it's like, oh, people going missing while hunting. This sounds like something I should totally watch, and it's l a late evening and I'm alone. Like, this isn't going to yeah. freak me out. So I watched it. Um, I encouraged you guys to watch it because <coughs> I wanted us to discuss. Um, I thought overall um, it was an interesting documentary. Um, it definitely started off where it's like, oh, cool, what's 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 all this about? And then took a sharp left turn, I feel like, out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, eh. and they're, and they're, but, I mean, their turn. They kind of lead up to it, but, like, when he just comes out and is like, here, blah, 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 it's like, oh, okay, this is what we're talking about. Like, when they play the noises, it's like, oh, we're talking about, like, weird creatures and shit. Oh, no. yeah. You know, and like, I get it. Like, the, very, oh, okay. the very last one? Right, right, yeah. yeah. Like, I was like, oh, okay. And I kind of read up about the guy. And he's put out, I think his name's, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, <coughs> Doug Politis, I think is how you say it. He's got f eight books out about not just missing hunters, but, like, children going missing in national parks. And, like, mm. you know, all of them have to do with missing pe persons and people. Um, I, I, I'm close to ordering the book because I kind of want to read the book. How you just spell his last name? Uh, I'll P figure it out. Something. I'll figure it out. Keep talking. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I d I did appreciate with the the turn. He never really was like, this is exactly what happened, and this is the only thing that could. He never really like. You didn't get a definitive answer <coughs> on what's going yeah. on. Yeah, he, he, he kind of was like, here's the information. Like, a definitive stance. He didn't really yeah. take a stance on anything and say, hey, this is what I think. That You know, it, it didn't quite go off the rails that way where he's like, oh, it's some kind of conspiracy or this yeah. and that. You know, he just like, hey, here's some this cases is, I this found. This some weird stuff. All of, all of these cases, uh, you know, they have coinciding things. Maybe not all of them, but at least these, uh, I think it was like, was it eight or ten categories? I thought this would be in your notes. That I couldn't find on. I literally searched for his categories, and I don't want to watch the documentary again because I had to do a test today, so whatever. Um, anyways, yeah, so he's got different categories that all of them meet, you mm -hmm. know. Um, Mr. Uh, Brown over here is probably going to look that up. He's not saying anything. Um, I'm trying to find <coughs> this, that, you know, because we kind of just jumped into this. Let's rewind a little bit. Okay. So, we, you know, you said you watched the documentary. We've all watched it now so we could converse. It deals with, you know, just people going missing and 100% missing, just disappearing. Not a shred of evidence. There are some. That yes. Up, right. We'll, pref we'll start with the umbrella. Yeah. And there's these clusters of where people just tend to seem to go missing. And then there's there's this list of similarities categories like you said of um it was like change in weather uh nearby rock slides boulder boulder fields mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. uh water uh you're remembering more than i am on the list for sure. well he watched it the most but, recent yeah i watched this like two weeks ago but um and even we're saying clusters of areas you know this is this documentary specifically is talking about hunters so this is like National parks, wilderness areas, wildlife management areas, you know, in different states where there's clusters of, you know, like, hey, it's not just one person went missing here. Like, multiple people mm. have gone missing. Um, he, he talks about um, there's, you know, some cases where um, they, they've searched and they've searched and they search and there's just no trace of anything. You know, we talk about you know, different things that you have when you're a hunter, you know, like the biggest thing that's <clears throat> not going to blow away is your gun, you know, and, and no mm -hmm. guns are recovered or anything like that. Or bows, bows. Or there was like a backpack recovered, but they also found that guy's remains, but we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll so get that to that one, story. That well, one, they, they, they found his that's bow the, and his 
But that's other stuff. and yeah. a skull and femur. They, they found a lot of his stuff. Yeah, so that's the but only the one weird, where I the feel like they they boobs. had a bunch found. Yeah, but um, that one was a weird one to me. Yeah, that one was not weird to me. Yeah, that's what I want. I want your opinion on that one. It's we get yes to and it. no because we kind of talked about this, and even there was the <clears> one I forget. It was a female that they had found, and she was also not clothed. And so mm-hmm. we'll get on the. I guess maybe what your uh, maybe theory is on on that case. Mm-hmm. And what I kind of think maybe could happen with some of these, but I mean the the, the first case that they talk about this Thomas Thomas Messick dude, mm-hmm. um, lifelong hunter, you know, taught classes on hunter you know, safety, hunter safety for for years. I said like he was um, the dude that taught. He was an army he, ranger. Army ranger, yeah, the yeah, retired army ranger. The dude knew what the hell he was doing. Yeah. He went out he, he missing at 82, but still enough, you know, energy to go out and sit and hunt, and they were doing a push. Yep. And so, you know, they, they say in the documentary, you know, they, they're, they, they're hunting a new area they hadn't hunted before, but they're off of a road, and they all walk about 100 yards from each other, and then about, well, I think they said maybe 30 to 40 yards into the woods, they find a spot, they sit. Guys, you yeah, know, the younger the guys are on the other side. They're doing the push. They're, they're, on, yeah, they're, they're on their doing, way. They're yeah. push. And, you know, they're sitting there, the they're waiting. Drive. He's got, um, you know, they say he's got duck boots on, he's got some camo, he's got a red flannel hat, he's got maybe like a Nutrigain, like some kind of snack with him, and he's got his rifle, you know. It's like, all right, cool, you know. And they would, like you said, they just walked up the road and gone in 30 or 40 yards, mm-hmm. and the other guys looped around to push deer toward them, mm-hmm. up this Midwestern, Northern state kind of deal. Right. So he was on a, an established road that they'd driven in on, They've been on the road. They hadn't hunted the area before. Yes, that's what they said. But it, it is it is a, a not really a paved road, but it's a trail. It's a path. It's it's people have driven on it before, obviously because it's cleared off and it goes right up to the water. And uh, I forget the exact time. I think they were supposed to meet back at the truck. Three. Hold on. I've got it. I'm searching my brain right now. Either way, yes, it was a reasonable hour that they were all supposed to meet back up at the truck. To get out of there, if they didn't, you know, see anything, no shots were heard, nothing like that, and he doesn't show up, and then of course, you know, they start fanning out, they start searching, um, you know, w- what's going on? The, the guys, I, I didn't know this, I, I didn't remember this in my hunter safety course, but they shoot off three shots yep. in the air to kind of like, hey, shoot back at us if you hear us. We're trying to like figure out where you're at. Um, that's a, one I kind of stored in the back of the brain because I never heard that one before, but. Yeah, and it, and it goes – it's three of whatever you can do loud, like three mm-hmm. whistle blows, that kind of stuff. Yeah, making some kind of noise to try to get someone to make noise back to you. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing. They, they hear nothing. Um, <clears throat> they uh, – you know, they – two – or I don't maybe two or three of the guys. A couple of the guys stay in the truck on this road. They're honking the horn on the truck. They're seeing what's up, you know, waiting for them. A couple guys, you know, I, I guess maybe head back into uh, – into town and you know they call his wife the son son's his son's hunting with him and calls his mom like oh dad's missing blah 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 It'll we're be okay we're gonna find, him. Worry we're find him like he's the man it's dad don't worry about it you know yeah and i mean his son even said during the interviews or whatever he was like you know we never had a contract for the house he's like we've leveled our own foundation he yeah, was he, just I the old the, handy dude that quote i remember the quote in the in the documentary when he when he's like digging because you know it's a pyramid house or laying foundation for it and he's like digging up and he's like, Dad, we should get a backhoe for this. And his dad points at him and says, I got one right there. You know, I was like, that's, yeah. Yep, that's, that's rough and school. tough right there. That's old school for sure. And so, like, hearing, you know, just the backstory about this guy and, and knowing what his background is, like, clearly this dude can hold his own. You know? Totally. Like, you know, say if there's an injury or anything like that, you know, I trust that this dude, you know, would would have been able to, you know, somehow patch himself up or, or – crawl himself out or fire off his rifle to alert that he was in trouble, you know? Yeah, and they didn't, nothing was found, you know, so it wasn't like, oh, he got attacked by, as found the, the, the category things. So, there you go. Um, He wasn't, th- there was nothing. Like, wasn't a Bench. candy wrapper, there was no shred of clothing, there wasn't a boot, there wasn't a hat, there wasn't flesh. They had, I mean, during the search, they, they eventually they get out and search. They have search and rescue teams come out. They have trained search and rescue people come out who know what they're doing to look for people who are missing. They have um, over 300 people come out to search for this guy. And, 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 yes, it's kind of rough terrain, and they have dogs, but they were saying the way they did it, it was kind of like a grid search with uh, – I forget what lines they called it, the term they had for it. But essentially you grid off an area with line – 
Everyone walks that area. As soon as you're done, you just kind of flop over to the next yeah. area. The person at the end is running string. Did yes. you already say that? Yeah. Okay. No. It's like a grid with string. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're literally are... gridded with string. Yeah. So the like, person at the end is walking with string in between the trees. They get, get the, into their pattern. They tie off. And they know flips that over. Yeah, they've searched that area. And they said they turned that area into just spider webs. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't. They said they went through waist deep marshes they went through areas where you could only see the guy's ankles in front of you it was that that much you know uh, they put they looked at every inch of it yes there, there was that much foliage there was that much you know trees bushes everything that you know they, they went through it they searched um what's what's the strangest one about this to me there's two things is his hunting buddy talks about this noise that he hears mm -hmm. yep and that was the, it was like okay cool that's that was the first sign to me I was like okay this is maybe kind of a weird documentary, and he talks about this noise he hears and he's like it's not like a tree fall on or anything like that he couldn't really describe it and then he kind of I guess his son he had described it to his son once, and he he said it sounded like a big steel trap closing, giant one yeah, yeah. like not like a small one like a an, an enormous steel trap closing, and I'm like okay that's I feel like that's kind of a strange noise to hear out when you're hunting you know like because. I've heard a tree fall in a video before. I've maybe out in the wilderness heard a tree fall before. We've heard trees fall. Yep. And and I feel like it's that's a distinct a, sound. And say, it sounds just like you think it would. And then yeah. you say, man, wouldn't it be crazy if that fell over the road we're driving on? And the next corner it did. And then what, Jordan gets out and helps push it? Or what I happened mean, we, with that? We had to. Yeah. Both of us had to. We didn't to have push. chainsaws or chains. We were just useless. Well, when was that? Was that New Our, Mexico? Oh, kind of, yeah. So we got big another small tree and leveraged and just kind of er, er, scooted slowly it. Slowly scooted yeah. it all the way. Got her done. Hey. Old, old school leverage. That Bear grills adapt to overcome. Yes. <laughs> that, Improvise that, adapt. That, yeah. <laughs> Drink your own pee. Oh, God. Rinse off Immediately. these nuts in this bear poop and eat it. Um. <laughs> so I found these 11 similarities that – that just got me to – I was totally rabbit hole for a second. I watched more on Missing 411 stuff. I found a YouTube video. Les Stroud, mm -hmm. Survivor Man yeah. guy. I mean, he, I like the him. dude can survive. Yep. They have him do this – retrace the steps of – this is off of another missing – one of his missing books. I forget which one it was, but it was a child. two-year-old child has gone missing, and, and I think it's a national park. And I watched the video. didn't get quite all the details. But he's tracing these steps, and it's like – nine or ten miles of like incline decline like you know hiking mountains and they're saying that this child did this in the course of a day and they, and they found the child and when they say when they found the child he was just laying on the ground with his jacket and shoes off next to him just in a ball and he was asleep but he was alive but he had to travel nine miles you know like and you're talking about a two-year-old you know and he less Stroud's like crawling under a barbed wire fence and He's like, oh, you know, they found some clothes here. Maybe he got under this fence, but this is already X amount of miles from where they last saw him. And then he's, like, getting into bushes and shrubbery and foliage. And it's like, he, at nighttime, he's like, this is when the child would have been allegedly out here walking. And he's like, I can't see anything, and we have a full moon tonight. He's like, there's no way a two-year-old got through this. And I'm just like, that's why I say, like, I kind of want to read some of, more of his books and kind of dive into it a little bit more because – I I try I I kind of read an article where someone was kind of trying to debunk him a little bit this author sure which totally you're fine. always gonna get yeah as they should um and, and I, I you know I'm always a fan of these weird stories like okay uh, that's I mean, kind I of too. that's kind of unexplainable like what the hell's going on here you know but yeah that was my rabbit hole it was just fun. like oh they've got the uh, this credible guy j just saying like hey this is how this hike was for me yeah a professional like a professional outdoorsman hiker or whatever. <laughs> Um, so on this documentary, this first c case and all the rest, there was these 11, Back to that, yeah. the scripters, not, not descriptors, not categories, but similarities that they would yeah, run. I, I, I use the word similarities trying to search for that because it's what makes these cases. Cause there's a lot of people that go missing. There's a lot of people that, you know. Have never been found. I think I think similarities the, is probably the, similarities the best way to describe it. These cases is what this guy's like looking cri at. Criteria yeah. might be criteria a better word. is good. Yeah. And so these eleven, not all of them have all eleven by any means. Right. But all eleven of these encompass. They have some assimilation of of multiple. And it, things. yeah, they, these eleven them, yeah. things 
are the 11 common factors between all these random disappearances and a hundred like just situations that don't make sense um one of them is that uh there's always a point of separation they can identify where hey, they this split is, yes exactly they split the time of disappearance is always in the early evening late afternoon in all these cases uh there's always there's I keep saying always. As we said, there's 11 of these. These 11 encompass all of it. Um, Consistently, frequently. Frequently. Um, but not all of them are applicable to every case. But mm -hmm. in a lot of, in most of these cases, there's boulder fields nearby or rock slides. Um, most of them that I recall us watching were near water, <coughs> which is the fourth one on their list. These, these seem to happen a little near water a lot. Uh, right. There's a weather event. A big shift, a uh, you know, temperature, clouds moving in, fog, something. There's a shift in weather. Uh, disability or illness, be it elderly, be it this, be it that. That's one of them. It's not all of them. Right. Um, but it's it's one that kind of seems to run, run in the mix. Uh, canines can't track. That seems to be very common in all. I of think them. with most of them, yeah. They they get dogs out there. They'd fall a line, and then the line would just. Stop. Hundred percent in. Done. Just yeah. in the middle of a trail, mm -hmm. an open trail. Uh, things are found in the area that was previously searched, so they'll they'll grid these things off and they'll search and search and search. And that ties into I think we were talking about the the case we're talking about maybe it's hypothermia. Yeah, but so, let's wait for that. Yeah. So yeah. they would grid these areas off and do these you know uh, uh, in very intense man hunts. But then, so, you know, they, they might take another small team out there to go run it again later. And in a spot that was 100% looked upon before, they'll find mm -hmm. some boots or a belt. Yeah. Or and, and most of them that they found when they went back were in obvious places. Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't like they found them under tree exactly. growth or under leaves. Yeah, right. they didn't they kick were a like, lock over. They, 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 they were, like, purposely set out like someone was neatly. sitting next to a log. And it's took like, your hey, boots off this hat's and set sitting them on the, here. Like, we looked here. We can't find the hat. Then you guys come back tomorrow. Oh, there's the hat sitting yeah. right there on the couch. Like, like, yeah. Kind of an ob, like you said, obvious placement of an item. Like, uh, we'll get into that other case in a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, missing clothing. That kind of runs with the uh, prior one. Not all these cases there was missing clothing, but it seems to be you know when they when they find something. That was very much not there like before. If something's like, recovered, yeah. It's, it was a lot of the time it was clothing. There were exceptions, as we've said. Uh, unknown cause of death. When they have recovered bodies or remains or bones, you know, be albeit mm -hmm. remains, um, they, they, you know, they've, they've done all the, the science they can on these remains to try to see what happened. And like the rarely, and undetermined rarely cause they're of death. just like, we have no idea. Rarely yeah. they have have right. any yeah, yeah. any any uh, there idea. There isn't an explanation. There's no explanation most of the yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, and geographical clusters. We kind of touched on that. It just there's hot spots of just where this stuff. And happens. you can you can Google this and you can see just for your own edification and figure out if you're hot in this area or whatnot. Mm -mm. But um, I mean, yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. I was actually relieved to see when I first saw the map there wasn't really anything in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> I think the closest um, thing was good. Oklahoma, and I was like, all right, cool. Like, hey, be careful. Uh, we missed Abe today. Abe's busy. He's not here to talk about this with us, but um, he's here in spirit, kind of. Someone's gonna forget say, him. Someone's gonna say something stupid eventually. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, the 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 Thomas Messick case, the first one we're talking about. The other strange thing about that that he made sure to point out, and I kind of read up about it, is the FBI showed up. The FBI. Lauren, uh, let me interrupt. When that came up on this. Lauren watches a ton of murder shows and murder podcasts is into it. And immediately she was like, they only come if it's weird or if there's kids. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. A normal disappearance, like, oh, his wife probably killed him. FBI is not showing up. And they're, you know, you know, people, I guess, you know, playing both sides of the coin, people are like, oh, well, maybe they're just there to, to aid them. And no. no, no, no. They had 300 plus people there and like trained search and rescue people yeah. with dogs. They didn't need four other FBI well, agents. And, we didn't and need they, they, from what was told, they didn't help. They didn't do anything. They showed up, took and some notes, and just like and just watch. They watch what's observe. going on. And and they they talked to his wife. Very, very and they're like, hey, we don't know what's going on. We won't know what's going on till we recover a body. But something weird's going on. No. 
That's what they said to her. And yeah. it's like, what does that even mean? Something like, obviously he's missing. Yeah, thanks for the heads okay. up. He but disappeared. Like, are you saying, like, something, like, weird weird's going on? Like, what, like, is, what is the... Yeah, like, is this X-Files theme song time? You know, like, we're getting... That's why I said, like, it... It, it, to me, it was kind of a curveball because they yep. went into, especially, they have the woman. We're moving on to. I'm gonna move on to this other case. I forget her name. She's got land. Do we want to s- jump this quickly? I mean, that's kind of it for Thomas Messick. He's still missing. They found nothing. And this the happened search is what still year? Open. Uh, 1415, I believe. This was back huh? in 14, 2015. 15. 15. 2015. Said, four, said 14, 15. Okay. What happened? Sorry, I was I was like, is that the date you're giving? Fourteen fifteen? Like, wow, you're way off. <laughs> when Columbus sailed <laughs> yeah. the ocean blue. <laughs> and on to our next topic. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know, Scully. Yeah, so so that that dude My like, sister was abducted by aliens. I need your help. <laughs> Anywho, my name is Fox Mulder. I'm the laughing stock. What do they call him? Like I've Freaky never Fox? Have you ever watched X Files? No. Oh I, I, I never really watched X Files. I've I, never I still seen think an episode. The coolest episode I remember of X Files is they they piggybacked with cops, and so they made it seem like X Files was an episode of cops. What? It was awesome. That that's pretty. That's it was pretty awesome, dude. They they were like searching for like different monsters, but it was a creature that took on your biggest fear. It was weird because it's X-Files. It's science fiction. Awesome. Anyways, um, yeah, Thomas Messick, still missing. No sign of him. They've not found anything. Search The search is still open, but I don't know anyone's – I don't think anyone's actively searching for him. Yeah, at the, at the end they said it's like been there's, almost still, five there's still some people that go up there and like like kick around trying to search. But and I've got to believe anything. that nobody hunts that area. Like i got to believe – if you're up – because it's up in New York. Oh, you left something important out of this. What did I oversight on – the the gentleman, the sheriff, under sheriff, that was under sheriff was the other guy. Um, deputy, whoever the law enforcement officer was, they were talking to about this or the park was ranger. Was he the sheriff in that town? Whoever it was, this was the Thomas Thomas Messick case. He said when they were walking, was there anything weird? And he said there was no wildlife. Yeah, mm-hmm. I did oversight yep. that one. And he said, you know, is that weird? And any, anybody who spent some time in the field, which are all of our listeners, otherwise you probably wouldn't be listening to this garbage. And, and, um, and just to, to, to exp- uh, I guess, expand on that, when he says no wildlife, he says you hear yeah, nothing. I was getting there, yeah. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I was going to say, like, you you sit in these tree stands, you're like, oh, my gosh, something's coming. It's always a squirrel. Yeah. Um, or, the, you know, there's there's piles of birds and butterflies. And Bugs and crickets armadillos and frogs and, and, and noises. stuff. And it's the, the forest, once you settle in – is noisy. Very. And they said it's silent. They didn't see a squirrel. They saw no insects. <coughs> they saw nothing. They said, uh, I think uh, he, it was just dead air. Yep. It was nothing. Which is very odd because I'm assuming that these hunters, when they went in there to hunt, you don't. I feel like that would be something you would notice pretty off. I think it would take a minute to settle in. I mean, because you're like, all right. You but know, especially you're kinda looking around and then like. These guys do it. They're doing the push, and you have dudes who are sitting. Sure. After a while, sitting there, one of these dudes is going to sit there, and and none of them in their interviews mention anything like that. It's True. just it's just that sheriff, and I, I and I'm glad you remember that because I did forget that because he was, uh, I think he was like search and rescue trained too, and and he grew up in the area, and and he's you know obviously the sheriff, and he's you know. Right well, he wasn't sheriff, but whatever he was, yeah, I don't recall. Deputy, he was law enforcement of some kind. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's I mean, even and the messed up thing is I watched this documentary Friday, and we went and hunted Saturday morning at or uh, Saturday night at the farm I think it was, and so I'm like sitting out in the blind and I'm just like, all right, cool. Like I watched this spooky documentary last night. I like, get all right. I hear noises, so we're good. And like you had just you know we're walking out I think the day Had before the and situation. the pigs and I'm like, you know, on my way out because. Uh, you know, we I think we talked about it a couple weeks ago. Whatever you're walking out, you're walking up on pigs, which is kind of freaky because you didn't have any, you know, any kind of gun on you. You just had your bow. And so as I'm walking out, I just played Spotify on my phone real loud with my headset on because the night vision had died. And I was like, all right, cool. Like I'm just gonna point and shoot if I walk Absolutely. up on anything. Oh God. 
Yeah, it was it was kind of freaky that I like. So you watched it, yeah, like last weekend, and you know, last Monday, you know, we had to put our old cat down. So that was kind of my plan to watch it that day, but then Laura and I were sitting around the house bummed, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah today the day not, would not have been. A, I think a good is choice not the day. to watch." Wit would sure. not sit down and watch it with me. She literally like normally she'll like she even said like I'll sit and watch something on my tablet while you're watching this, so we can at least be in the same in room, the same room yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And she straight like went to go take a shower, and never came back in the living room. She's like, "I'm not gonna like you go out hunting a lot." You're in the woods. Sometimes oh, sure. you don't have like cell I, signal. And I told like, him I was like, "Don't watch yeah. it with your wife." I was like, "Do not watch it with your wife." And I said to her a couple times, "Like, hey, I gotta watch this Uki behind uh, thing." She's like, "What is it?" And <laughs> I was like, "Well, Uki. people just kind of disappear and then never find them again or anything about them." <laughs> I wanted to watch it again last night, and so Steph was trying to find something to watch on TV. I was doing homework, and I was like, "Hey, you can watch this documentary with me." And she's like, "What's it about?" And I told her, and she's like, "Eh," and I was like. Right answer, actually. I don't want to watch <laughs> yeah, this that, with that. you. I'm just <laughs> good. Lauren don't watched it. it with me. And fine. She was all right. Yeah. It. You got life insurance. It's cool. Exactly. <laughs> How many years do you have to wait to have someone legally declared dead? <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. Uh, so no, no, no animal noises. That's no, nothing. No, no sightings of animals if in I, the area. If I found the correct gentleman <laughs> on this, his name was Sean Lamori, uh, under sheriff of Warren County. Okay, there we go. Yeah, New York. Yeah. So y'all should Google it. It's interesting. Or y'all should watch this whole documentary. Yeah, watch the whole documentary. This is it's not. The only it's okay. and, and Jared said it was weird. It is weird, but I didn't like lay in bed like. I'm not sure if I'm gonna hunt this weekend. No, no. It wasn't yeah, like uh, that. It was just like the, I could just the, use what I took spooky. out of it is the same thing that you said is like before I put in for tags, I may just do a little googling. Yeah, like it's a little my, spooky. It's a little might not hunt these areas. Maybe yeah. that's dumb. I've done dumber things. And, and the the thing about this too is is this doc. A lot of people are gonna be like, oh my god, whatever, you know. It's like no, it, totally. This guy did research on it, and he's got evidence to back up these stories and these claims. And he and he's not really even claiming anything. Yeah, he's interviewing people. Is always doing. He's he's just getting the backstory on like, oh, this person's missing. He's never been found. Like, oh, there was some weird stuff that went on. Yeah, like there's there's an unexplained event. Yeah. And so it's it's you know as a you know I'm still I consider myself a newer hunter, but still I'm a hunter. It's it's kind of spooky. It's just a little spooky. Dude. I have been in the woods without watching this, and. You hear a noise that you can't identify, and it's pitch black. You're trying to be quiet. You just sometimes your mind plays little we tricks talked on about you. It, you so know, it, it get, I'm I've never been like I need to get the hell out of here, blah blah blah. But there's a couple times where you're like, "Ooh, man, that sounds weird." Like I don't know what that is. I yeah. want to know what that is. Uh, and then and then you sit there and debate whether or not you're gonna turn your flashlight on and look in the direction of what you're. Hearing, yeah, like if, right. if whatever it is is gonna kill me, do I want to see it first or just yeah. let it happen? All right, like so. I kind of, kind of a little side uh, story of like I've I've heard people talk about hearing stuff and being in like a tree stand and stuff like that, hearing like kind of a weird noise, and all of a sudden like there's a cat in the tree with them or something, you know, like like they turn around there's. A raccoon, like just right there, like right next to him, like yeah. Just you hear like scratching and clawing or whatever, and you're like, uh, and then boom, boom. There's a trash panda. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sitting on those plow. That is why you always wear your harness and tie in. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you don't fall out after you're done pooping <laughs> your pants. Yeah. The other, the other story, I can't remember her name. But she's going out to deer hunt on her property. She gets up and it's a tree stand. And as she's sitting there, pull that shit up, Jamie. <laughs> should we go? Should we, uh, is that the Thomas Messick story? That's pretty much it. Let's yeah. Talk, you want to talk that, that one, one or hypothermia next? Um, I that one was I don't kind have of that story the, the, pulled up or refreshed in my mind. But if you've got it pulled up, then I would I would love to discuss it because you'll refresh my mind. Because this one, the, the, okay. The, let's wrap yeah. up Thomas Messick with. Um, you know, we talked about those 11 similarities between all these missing um, folk. Thomas, Thomas Messick's were. Well, I'm waiting for it to finish. 
There was a known point of separation. Right, on the, the time road. of disappearance fit late afternoon, early evening. Yeah, they were, uh, he they said. They were near water. They yeah. were near a little lake. There was a, yeah. There was a weather event. Lily I, Pond. Lily Pond. What was the weather event? I don't recall. I, th- I think they said it stormed maybe a, a couple, like a day or two after or something like that. Yeah. Disability or illness. Um, he was elderly. He was missing an eye. He was missing an eye from a head. Some black powder exploded. I don't know if a reloading yeah. accident or what, what, a, what yeah. a black powder explosion. Canines couldn't find anything. And he was right. It was part of a geographical cluster of disappearances. So he had, they what, said, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of the 11 similarities. I think you know, they said 60 case. miles from there. This one, they didn't really dive into a whole bunch. And I don't know that there's a whole lot to dive into with it. Um, Woman and her husband live on land. He frequently would, you know, he was an outdoorsman, a hunter, a go farmer, out and work on rancher. the land and hunt. Um, I guess I think it was deer season because this was like within the same time frame too. This was like within maybe a week or two. I think I could be wrong. Maybe it's a few months, but it, it relatively within the same like you know close time frame. She leaves to go to an event in in town yeah. and comes back. All of his stuff is at the house. He is car gone. everything. Like, and when I say all of his stuff, like his wallet, keys, everything is there at the house. He's gone. That was kind of, they didn't really dive too deep into that one. Never found, still missing. Mm-hmm. Just d- evaporated. Yes. I mean, yeah, for all intents and purposes, he's gone. He's just dust. All we are is dust in the wind. So, we feel that's wrapped up? You're my boy, Blue. Hi, hi. Only for a moment and the moment's gone. Oh my God! Dust. Uh, yes. So that's that's about it for Thomas Messick, and 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 for you know, of course, anybody who's just hanging out and still listening to us ramble about this stuff, it's and it's actually pretty interesting to just kind of read up about and watch the documentary about. And if if you're not into reading, because this guy does have a book, you know, then then watch the documentary. It's on Amazon. Um, it's it's interesting. A little spooky. Yeah, if you've got Amazon Prime, it's free. Finding her, are you going to skip to this lady next? We can, I, yeah, I can, well, I can talk about that one pretty quick if we want to, because that one, I mean, the, the, the. So exactly, that was that, that was in like where he, he kind of gets. To me, that's when. That's when he you, started to really get in like, okay, what is? Yeah, this? like like weird stuff. Going that one oogs me out the most. She said, she's, yeah. So she she walks out. It was in Lima, Ohio. She's yep. going out to her blind. Or her, her tree stand. On her property. On her property, yes. What was it, like the six-acre woods, what they call it? Like it was like a small amount of acreage on their property and, that was woods. And yes. very close to like yeah. the – not very close, but you know, he, hearing she, distance to the high school. She could hear the yeah, band. she could hear the band. High school in. football stadium, so they were playing – they were doing band practice. That night they were doing band practice. So she's sitting out. As she's sitting – um, I think the same thing with the the everything got quiet. Her everything name got is quiet. Jan Maccabee. Jan Maccabee. I guess her husband's like a real smart dude. Like he's like. Was a, that her husband that was that was so. talking about it, or was it someone related in town, or like her? I, don't, I can't remember who it was. Either way, she's sitting in the tree stand. They she's called it the Predator Case. Right, and so she's said. She, I mean, and if anybody who's seen, I mean, if you haven't seen the Predator. You, you must, this right you must now. be a new listener. <laughs> Watch yeah. the Predator and then hit play again. Um, the time, what time of year was this? Because that, that's the only thing I hunting season. Was, well, I think it was like, deer season up there. I mean, yeah. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's what she said she was doing. So fourth for. quarter. Yeah, we're gonna call it fourth quarter yeah. of the year. She um, is sitting out in the tree stand and she sees this pixelation. She says that. The way she described it was... 15 acre woods was what they called it. Okay, 15 acres. But um, she said it was like she had... If anyone ever have, like, where part of their eye gets, like, kind of out of focus... Or if you wear contacts, they get funky. Yeah, or wear contacts, they get a little funky. Uh, uh, and, And she was like, I felt like something was in my eye or blocking my eye or... Like blur, there was a blurry spot in my vision, and she rubbed her eye to try to make it go away. It wouldn't go away, and then this blurry spot. She said, like almost like an arm, reached out to like a tree that grabs was like the tree. grabs another tree, and then like 
shifts over to that tree, like floats, like that arm pulls the whole thing from one tree to another. And the trees were like eight feet apart or something yeah, like distance. that. Like, and it's just like some reality. She described it things. as first. She said it kind of like if you some saran wrap was hanging up there. Yeah. It was just distorted. Yes. She said, I just couldn't explain it. And she was like, that's really weird. Then all of a sudden, an almost arm, like you said, reached out and grabbed into the tree and it moved. And she said she wasn't like super scared, but like there was no, like everything got quiet. She couldn't hear the band anymore. There was this weird feeling. But here's the kicker. Here's where it gets a little big footy to me. She remembers that whoever the dude is, whether it's her husband or whatever, she says, he always tells me, if you see something weird, take a picture. So she gets her, you know, at this time, she has a Blackberry. Blackberry, right. She takes a Blackberry out and snaps a picture. A few pictures. She has one picture. She had taken pictures prior. She took pictures prior. Like selfies of her in the blind, like, I'm going to kill it here. Right. And this lady's no huntress, though. No. <laughs> no, this is a hunter. Yeah, she's, uh, this woman's hunting. And uh, and her friend, husband, whatever, is showing the pictures, and all the pictures. And he analyzes yeah. them clearly, like yeah. in a really what, scientific way. What, exactly. He has, you know, he shows us the phone, like, hey, this ain't anything special. And then he has the files, and he's like, here's the computer screen. I want you to see what I'm gonna pull up and see, like, no BS. And. All the other, all the pictures he's showing, he's like, "Here's this picture. This is her in the stand. Here's a couple more pictures. You can see this. The lights doing this. Here's the wood. All this stuff. Whatever. Here's the wood she's in. Yada yada yada." And he's like, "But what she takes of the weird event, the resolution has gone like." The picture was tiny, like a thumbnail. The resolution changed on the phone, which yeah. you can't do. Yeah. It's like a resolution that isn't an, a setting on the camera. On the yeah, phone. it was like it was like four ninety. It was like by, some obscure number for yeah. sure. And I don't know if oh Jamie over here can look it up or not. But um, there's that too. And uh, I didn't she take a picture afterwards too? That's that dude. That shows that it's like yeah. Afterwards, yeah. there's another picture. Like yeah, it that's goes back to, to the same like what is it 680 or whatever, like yeah, what, by 420 whatever, or whatever it was. It and he's like, these files are way different. And he's like, I have tried to like change the resolution to see. And he's like, you can change the resolution by going through all these settings and stuff, but that is not an option to change it to. Right. And this was you know obviously for people that don't know. Maybe we have some super young listeners. The Blackberries, you couldn't just go get an app that was like some phone app that yeah, you could I mean, do whatever. I'm, like, I'm looking at the have... picture right here, and it's kind of – it's. I mean, you can't really see anything, and it. it's just a blur, uh, and who knows what the hell it was. And and you guys can can Google this, and, and, and yeah, like he said, it's Jan Maccabee, I think is maybe how you pronounce it, and you can just type Jan Maccabee Predator, and you can see just the picture that's come up on her. Um. It's it's crazy that happens mm-hmm. that same evening. Yep. And and I I can't remember if this was her, it's nephew. her nephew. It's her nephew. It's her nephew. That's where he's at on this. He's, Matthew Finnegar. Matthew he's, Finnegar. He's on the he's Class in the of band. 2013. They're having their band practice at the at the high school football field, which is within earshot of her. She can hear it. It showed so it on a map. It's earshot's a stretch, but if you you've been around a, a school band practice is loud. I would say as a crow flies a mile or two. Yep. Okay. But but continue. Not bad. Yeah. It, it, Close it, enough. Whatever. Yeah, exactly. So they're as they're, as they're doing this band practice, uh, not only him but other people notice a a light. Yeah. Above the field. Like unexplained light. Just mm-hmm. see this big bright light above. They the said, you know, if you got your big stadium floodlights, it was above that where it should not be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, and he he said the everybody saw it. Everyone stopped. Even the uh, he's like even our kinda, band leader kind of looks at like, who, like are you did he, you see he, this and he describes him as and I'm sure anyone that's been in like any athletics or band or any like stuff he was one of those guys this guy described that doesn't stop for anything like we're doing this this is what our you know and he stopped looked at it and then turned around and said what the hell was that like yeah like everybody 
saw that. The whole, the band, the band director. Like Which, it was, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to sidetrack real fast. The other night, Saturday night, we had the fire out in the backyard and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, had some friends over, cooking on the grill. Which is another thing I need to talk to you about. That's way off to the podcast. So, uh, we I looked up in the air, you know, because we're in the backyard chilling. I lo- I just kind of looked up, scanned the backyard, scanned the horizon like I normally do, and there was a string of lights in the sky moving. There's airplanes. No, it wasn't airplanes because it was like it was, thir- it was like it was a chopper. It was like. Seven or eight lights, like side by side, that look like they may have been linked together in the middle with a straight line, flying up and out. They weren't blinking. They weren't, and all of a sudden they just disappeared, like they just turned off. And I, everybody that was there, I was like, "Hey, check this out." And I thought, you know, maybe it was Did a shooting stroke? star, huh? Did you have a stroke? No, because everyone else <laughs> saw it. I even, I even went inside. The girls had gone inside to do something. My, my daughter and her friend and my wife. And I ran inside and was like, hey, come check this out. Because, like, I was like, cool star event. You know, like, I didn't immediately think it's aliens. Right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it turns out, though, that was uh, a, a strand of satellites going through that I guess uh, had to do with, like, Tesla and uh, the um, Elon Musk and all them. It was like Interesting. A, something about, like, free internet for the world, like, very Tesla y experiment, like, like actual right. actual Tesla dude. But I like Elon. It sounds I like Parks and Rec. Anyways, but right then the moment we didn't know we no one Googled it and we were looked up and we we're like, I don't know what's really going on. It definitely wasn't an airplane. I've seen tons of airplanes flying through the sky. <laughs> and it was Remember definitely the first like, time that I saw like s- space debris like go through like right. the atmosphere. And it, like, scared the living shit out of me. I was like, oh, my God, someone's shooting missiles at us. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, it's d- space debris. It happens sometimes. It happens sometimes. Sometimes yeah. it happens. But anyway, so this event, they saw something weird above the – the in the general direction Same of the woods. Thing, totally unexplained. And I guess uh, – is it Lima? Is that the name of the town? Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be, um, according to some people, a hot spot for UFO sightings. Um, and this is where I – would cluster. I tell you people, this is where, you know, like, th- this guy's... And, and this this story, you know, obviously there's not a missing person or anything like that. It's just a weird story that he brought up because, again, like I said, this documentary starts to kind of take a left turn towards the end. Yeah, and th- this is towards the end of the show. That's why I wanted to know if you wanted to go over this one just yet because, like, he's oh, kind of like... Oh, just on my mind. There's a couple weird... We, uh, we can hop back around. I mean, this is Stormwater Creek, man. Ping pong. Yeah, no, 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 that's fine. Yeah. Going. Yeah, this one was weird. Ping I mean, it's kind of like, <clears throat> yeah, everybody saw stuff. That's cool. Everybody always sees things. Let's jump back to something that I consider normal. So, this one was the one I was super interested in. Because you're talking about the one you think was your... your the second. The second one. So... Third. This dude is Third. in his 30s. Mm-hmm. Relatively young, yeah. He was in the Crazy Mountains, mm-hmm. which anyone that doesn't know that's in Montana... And it is like they describe it as an island, which is a good description of an island of mountains. It's not attached to the Rockies. It's not like a huge, long thing. If you looked out on it from a distance, it looks like in the middle of a huge uh, flat area, there's just a big group of mountains. And apparently the name Crazy is is, is quite accurate yep. for the area. Yeah, there, there was a couple like reasons why they might have done, like they call it Crazy, the the Crow Indian Reservation is what it's on. Mm-hmm. Uh, it uh, uh, was said to when the crow were moved off the area, they cursed it to drive the white man crazy. Well, this guy was with one of his buddies. They're going bow hunting up in this. His name was Aaron Hedges. He was 38 mm-hmm. years old. 38, okay. It happened September 7, 2014. 14. Okay, mm-hmm. and him and his buddy, they had... Uh, two horses and a mule, mm-hmm. and they head up into this little spot in the crazy mountains that they've hunted before for years. For years, this is their same spot. loop, same trail. Yeah, the same trail's trail is visible from air. So these guys hunt this so much that he, he, first 
while they were going up, they had a, a mule wreck. Yes. And he lost some of his supplies. Now, they hunt this area so much that they had a cache, he has cache yeah. of supplies hidden out in the woods. So they get to their camp at one lake, and the cache is at another lake up in the up in the mountains. And he goes... Dude's been there so many yeah, times. So many times. He's like, hey, man, I'm going to go grab a sleeping bag from this cache because he lost his sleeping bag and a couple other things. I'm going to go get this shit. Uh, took his bow, all that stuff. Went to the other lake. Got the stuff at the cache, <clears throat> and it was, if I remember the map correctly, it was like a gentle arc. Like, if you're looking up, he kind of went, like, northwest. It's where the other lake was. It kind of curved around. Well, a little later on, he calls his buddy, and they're using the GPS-style phones that give a GPS location to the person on the other end. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And his GPS location said that he was off the trail from where he's coming back. And from their camp, he was now northeast of the camp. Yeah, so he was supposed to run northeast. Imagine, you know, say center of the map is is, is where they started yeah. from. They, that was camp. He was supposed to go northeast, hit a T in the trail, yep. take a left there on that T. Yeah. That's a better way to describe it. Which – Cuts back northwest, and his cache is basically directly north of camp, mm-hmm. but you've got to loop around to it. Mm-hmm. So when they call, he called them on the walkie-talkie and GPS position. He was, I don't want to say they, a significant distance, but he was a distance past the T. Well, they said that he yeah, came he back. The fork, he he came said. back, and they said, and the guy asked him. He was like, "So there's a T." There's a trail that goes off like more to the north and to the northeast of camp and one that goes kind of south down to camp. And he said, is that a hard T to miss? Like, is it, you know, everybody knows there's trails that are easy to see and trails that are really hard to see. And they mm-hmm. said, this is a well-worn path. And they there's flew not a helicopter a yeah. over it. Yeah, they yeah. flew a helicopter over it, and it is a well-worn path. And he said, there's no way that this dude would have missed this T. All that being said, in addition to the fact that he was had been there enough and knew the area enough to cash supplies. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So about 4 p.m. is the last time he talks to his buddies. With uh, it, It's saying that it's a Garmin GPS walking yeah. system. Mm-hmm. 4 p.m. is the last time they hear from him, and that is on the 5th. Yep. Um, next day, his buddies are like, oh, fuck. I don't think he's coming back. Yeah. And I guess at this point, um, a snowstorm. We're talking about weather, you know, inclement weather or some kind of weather event Weather coming change, in. yeah. Um, a snowstorm came in on the 7th, um, 18 to 24 inches of snow, um, s- uh, temperature dropping uh, from about 40 to 50 degrees to about 10 to 15. Yeah. So there's our big weather event. And this is two days he's been missing for, you know, uh, uh, since the 5th, so two days as well, two days later. Um, and mind you, what part of his mule wreck lost was his sleeping bag, and that's why he was going to his cache. Right. And but so he made it to his cache. Did he? Yeah. Cause no. He, he, well, we don't know that. Well, we don't really know. but so he, Because he, cash was here. He kept going this way. No, he was coming back from the cache. No. No. He I never went. I don't think he ever made it to his no. cache. It did, heading northeast. Okay. okay. I'm trying to describe for listeners. If he's heading northeast, okay, maybe you're right. Cause maybe he was I, maybe supposed I read to that, he um, was supposed to turn to left to go to his cache. He kept going. If it was a T, not a plus yeah. or an X, but a T. Yeah, I thought he made it and came back and no, missed the T. He, he kept anyway, going. Okay. He never made his turn. And the last GPS point was past the. Uh, it's the zip tie. Sorry, sorry, everyone. <laughs> We're the, I'm the worst. Um, Can you hear me? I'm just, uh, oh God. Um, so yeah, he so he gone that's, past. Yeah, that, that's even a harder one because looking at the map, like that's like a like you. I don't even know how to describe that that type. It's, that's just it, a, it's, it's it's more of a why like it's a veer. The map, it, it, yeah, he's veered. He's he, veered he, off course. He, he veered way off. Yeah, course. it's 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 a it's almost kind of like a gradual veer. It's not like he's like sharp off, you know, like he, mm-hmm. he makes what looks to be a wrong turn and just veers and keeps going off this wrong trail, which again is strange because if you're familiar with the area and, and there's at least a day gap there where there's no inclement weather, you know, mm-hmm. 
So you're you should be familiar enough with after maybe a, I I would assume if you're familiar enough to leave the cache of supplies, that maybe a mile into it you're like, oh shit, I'm yeah, going the wrong I, way. I should have been there. By I'm now. going the damn wrong way. Like I I am. Like yeah. I have to turn around. Because and he had a Garmin. His, his cache thing was supposed to be off of a lake, too. I believe. Yep. There was it, there was the it wasn't near a lake. Um, it, the trail ran somewhat parallel to a creek, and Camp which had Fire Lake is where they were yeah. originally yes. going. Which Camp, yeah. w- would say would summit and Sunset this, Lake they, was where the cache was. They would summit this yes. hill and drop down, but the the trail ran or parallel sunlight. Yeah. to Sun, a s- Sunlight Lake was where the cache where was. Where his cache was. That's where he was heading. So it was by a lake. Uh, the trail but, also ran parallel to a big creek that had some waterfalls which, on it. Which if Anybody is an outdoorsman, and you go to a place multiple times, creeks, rivers, things like that are things that you know easily easily to find some point of interest. And right. Even the people they were interviewing, the locals, were like, in the crazies, you find a creek, you and follow it down, follow it down, you hit a meadow, and that's where all the towns are at. Yeah. Like, you don't get lost. Yeah, they, were, they interviewed the guy, and, and we'll get into it. Where he plays them, but a, a property owner yeah, out there, property owner, who, who and him and his wife are saying like, oh yeah, like it, the, you, it's kind of hard to get lost here because if you find any kind of stream of moving, any kind of body of moving water, follow it, follow it, you're gonna get back to town. Yeah. Okay. So so that happens, and so now we're you know we're two days in, yep. he's not around, his wife finds out on the eighth, when she talks to his two buddies and she reports it to the local sheriffs and they're, they're not far from Billings, Montana. I can't remember the small town that's there though. That was like heading up, you know, the the, the search and rescue. Um, And, and you know, one note they make here that they're like, Oh, this is kind of weird. You know, he's been missing for, you know, more than a day, more than 12 hours. Why didn't you guys radio in or come back in town and alert? And they're like, well, He's experienced. Yeah. He had a, a firearm with him. Like and the this. weather came in. We figured he would <clears throat> bah- hunker down and come meet us. Yeah. Like, we, we, we were, he's experienced, you yeah. know. And that's that's the the other thing, too, to keep in mind with a good bit of these cases is is all of these men that have gone missing, and I think even some women are experienced with the outdoors mm-hmm. and experienced with hunting and, and being able to kind of adapt and survive in, you know, kind of a, a you know, shit case scenario. Um, so that happens. He's missing. Um, I can't remember how long the search was and how long they they took. Yeah. Are you looking he, at his trail now? Yeah. And and this the same stuff that you know Austin's got pulled up right now. Yeah. If you guys feel like I get, diving into I, it, too. I get the where the trail was and how it was. I just re- I I listened to it as in he went over and then came back it, and then made the phone call. I, I just missed that one little tidbit. But the way the trail goes, I understand that. See? Yeah. He's kept going. Mm-hmm. We, we, so, we think. We think. Yeah. We, th- yeah. Yeah. we think. So they, uh, you know, of course the search starts. Um, they have weather, which is bad, so they can't get helicopters in the air uh, just immediately because of the snowstorm that's in, you know, that, that's come in. Um, it, it says here that they had a... Uh, 20 dog teams, 7 horse teams, 59 ground surgers, and National Guard and private helicopters equipped with night vision equipment and spotlights eventually join this effort to look for this guy. So that's that's a lot of people. Yeah. That's not like, oh, well, me and, you know, me, Jim and, Bob. me and Jordan and Austin are going to go look for Abe by ourselves. You know, like, no, dude, they got a team. We got, we got teams on with technology, you know, well, yeah. like, and they're going to be able to cover some ground. And he talks to the helicopter guy that was – Head like one of the helicopter pilots in the search, and the dude goes. Most people we definitely find dead or alive. Like we we find either a body or the person. Like and and he flew over the trail. Like yeah. he, you know, it was like here's a the trail they took. Here's a the trail they took. Look, all right, right here, you know, is where they would camp. Flew over, yeah. hit the lake, banked off, and he was like, all right. So he would come over here, and you see that rocky that rock slide right there. That's where that's his cutoff. Pretty obvious, and that's when the guy asked, like, you know, had check that criteria off the list as well. And he said, you know, it, was there snow? He said no. And the and but then the pilot said, oh, but there was snow. And then the 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 guy producing this or whatever um, said no. The snow didn't start till a day or two after he was starting to be considered missing. Mm-hmm. Like he, 
when he hit that that T in the road, T in the trail, he it was you know like they said, 40s or 50s and sunny and clean. So for a dude who cash stuff, no way he's gonna miss that. Yeah, that's the only thing he's going to do is handle that situation. Yeah. Um. So by uh, September 9th, so this is now four days, um, second day of the search, uh, they find his boots. Um, the boots are found intentionally placed side by side. Like someone took them off. Like you take off your boots yep. into your bed and yep. set them down. Set them down. Like you're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chill for a little bit. Here are my boots. And I can't remember what he left camp in whenever he was going out to look for his cash. Uh, I don't remember the clothing he had on or what kind of. I don't think any, they clar- said that. I don't think anything they to. I, I'm thinking of any any layers essentially. Yeah. Isn't I'm trying. Okay, uh, think worst case scenario or, or best case scenario. He has a a coat on. Mm-hmm. Okay, like he has a hunting jacket on or whatever. He's got layers on. Boots are off. Okay, we're gonna keep that in mind that a snowstorm has come in. It's been snowing. It's cold. The temperature drops like 40, 50 degrees or or 40 to 30 degrees. Whatever. It's it's cold as shit outside. Okay, and obviously the wind's picked up. And you don't have shelter. So this guy, is, they find his boots. Um, not far from there, they find a camelback bladder. Um, they find a fire pit. Yep. They also find a rock overlooking the river with a thermos and this cup. Yeah, that's later on, though. They there. find that later. Oh, they do? Yeah. Yeah. Right now they find right, the campfire. Yeah. So right here they they fi- they find with continue. he's a smoker fire pit. Yeah. Partially it, yeah, burnt partially cigarette, burnt cigarette pack. Part, part, it, was his brand. Brand. Yep. it was his brand. A fire bundle, two waist belts from a backpack which had yep, been cut which off. Which is weird. So I'm not sure why you would cut those off. Your they backpack. talk about they that. Discuss that. No um, one really knows. Yeah, but they they they, they uh, what what do you call it? Uh, stipulate? Or yeah. Speculate. Speculate. The tube that was connected I'm, to the bladder. Yet. Had been removed, so the bladder, like you can camel like you have a big straw. Yep. Not on there. Um, they speculate maybe he was using to try to drink water. Um, but the the weird thing about this, and we kind of touched on it earlier, is the searchers were in that same spot, um, one to two days yep. prior, and didn't see any of it. With this. dogs, right? The dog team, the lady talks about it. She rolls through with her dogs. They don't see anything. Exact same spot. Nothing there. Okay. And they show the spot in the – It's pretty show. obvious. It, it, the, it's – It's a bench. Yeah, it's a bench with – like where if you sit in the bench, you can pretty much see everything on this bench. It's like a tree kind of in there and like a log sitting over kind of where the fire pit is. And they also said around this, the rocks that are around this area are like sharp – pointy, jagged rocks, like stuff that you so would not walk barefoot there's on. There's rocks, and then on, on top of that, there's still snow. So they're saying, even if he did, you know, and, and we get into this whole theory of, of possible hypothermia, if he did strip his boots off, because what happens with hypothermia, yeah, start getting hot. you start getting hot, or the perception of heat. Yeah. And so you start to remove your clothes because you feel hot. And so even if he did strip off his boots, like his bare feet would not, he would not have gotten much further than that. You know, like he would have been within a distance, they would have found him. Mm-hmm. Um, so that happens. Um, finally, I think by the twenty second, um, they f- they have found this evidence. But by the twenty second, they kind of decide to just pull off the search. Like, yep. hey, listen, we're not finding anything. You know, like what we, we we understand this guy's missing, but we can't sit out here every day forever. Mm-hmm. You know, that which is uh, I understand the case with any missing person. You know, over time. You know, once it kind of loses its luster, you're not finding anything, or, or you have no leads. Yeah. You, you gotta re you gotta you know reallocate source you know, resources to other places or other things. You know, people have to go back to doing other things. Um. So so that all happens. Um. They they say all the way to uh. June twenty second, twenty fifteen, nine months after disappearance. Yep. That's, um, this is where it gets weird to me. Um, I don't even want to try to pronounce his last name. Roger Beslanowicz, I think. Yeah, that's well, the property sure. owner. So right? Roger, uh, no, this is a butcher from Powell, Wyoming, came across Hedges' belongings um, while visiting relatives at Rain Anchor Ranch in Sweetgrass County. So maybe it's the property. 
that has the people in there. I can't quite remember their names or yeah, because the, the, they found something. Those people yeah, had so, found so, something. So the guy with the property owner, they every year they go down the fence lines. It was the it, it was we the husband and wife. Yeah, the husband were on and there, wife. Yeah, but it was their friend, and I think that's who this guy is. Was okay. got a hold of them because they saw an orange hunting vest and a backpack. Right, but the, he said they normally check the fence lines. And that's when they found – they went out to check the fence lines for the year. And his friend goes, hey, what's that over there? And it was his – not his friend. I think it was his father-in-law or something like that. And they – he found the backpack while he was checking the fence lines with them. And basically was like, hey, man, this – some dumb hunter left his backpack here. It was like – placed under a tree with his bow next to it. This is where the <clears throat> thermos on the rock overlooking the river and you can see the ranch house from where they're at. Like you they were where they found it and they look yes. back and you can totally see at, at the head of the ridge it says there was a thermos cup and an open energy drink. Mm -hmm. um, Which is also weird. An energy drink I mean, this guy loves energy drinks, let me tell you. I mean, right, but I mean, like, that far into your hunt, like, you hadn't cracked your energy drink? Who like, knows? I mean... Like... Sorry for partying. If, if I mean, <laughs> I, I guess, you know, there's always, you know, we always, I always say there's two sides of the coin. Right. Uh, imagine this, sure. this dude is just uh, disoriented and lost, and he's been in the cold trying to survive, whatever. Say that, he, you know, by this day, he's just so disoriented, he has no idea where he is, but he decides... All right, cool. I'm going to drink this energy drink yeah. right now. Um, Got super tired. Should get, I need to get some energy, or I need some kind of nourishment, yeah. or whatever. But it, so yeah, he finds and he says inventory at the scene included the, his bow. This is Aaron's yep. stuff. His bow, a backpack, socks, shirt, sweatpants, and a vest. Shirt, sweatpants, vest. Like that's. I mean, I feel like again. Who knows what kind of state of mind somebody is in at this point in time? And, you know, we, we, I don't, you know, I have nothing to point towards paranormal or unexplained anything at this point, you know. And even from this case, <clears throat> aside from them finding all this stuff in a spot that they had for sure searched the day before or prior or whatever, they'd been looked at already. Um, with with cold, I mean, you're going to want to, you're going to try to put on every layer you can right. to try to stay warm, you know. Like the the fire they found, you know, the year prior or whatever, kind of makes sense. All right, well, what what can I what what can I use to start a fire? Well, I've got my cigarettes, you know. What are I can try to start a fire with mm -hmm. the easel bird, whatever? I get that part, but yeah, you, they they find all this stuff on the property. <clears throat> it's within, like you can see, where there's homes, you know, mm -hmm. where where safety or help is yeah. essentially, you know, and and any you know, no no sign of a body just then. Um, you know, the guy says he kind of looked through the backpack and saw an out-of-state, you know, um, or pardon me, he saw um, the driver's license and the backpack, um, yep. and the guy's gun was in the backpack. Yep, his pistol. Yes, and so it's like, okay, cool, like, all right. Um, says he gets everything together, um, short distance from the ranch house and safety, like we said, so he gets everything goes down. Um, they find, the, you know, the thermos and the energy drink, um, move on to um, August 8th of 2016. So now we're looking at almost two years. Mm -hmm. They find a skull. Yeah, uh, the from a dude ranch. They yes, were out on sweet a... Sweet grass on, ranch. They were out on a, on, on a dude ride. Mm -hmm. Anyone that doesn't know what that is, it's just basically not people familiar with horses going out on a trail ride. <laughs> <laughs> um, law enforcement comes. Yep. They look at it. They figure it out. Um they they search the area, then they start to discover more of the skeleton. Yep. Um, they say they recover uh, less than eighty percent of the skeleton. All of it's within fifty to seventy yards. <coughs> Majority of the the moraine, well, the remains were concentrated in a twenty yard area. Hmm. So when you look up this whole map and you look at uh, like the distances from point of separation. You know, he, he's with his friends. The guys know where he took off. Mm -hmm. The point from there to where he ends up going to where they think he was, then where they find the boots and stuff, and then from there when they find the remaining of the stuff, and then they find the remains. 
like there's some distance that's been traveled. That, yeah. You know, like this isn't all like it's not all been found in the same area. Like 11 miles as the crow <laughs> flies, I believe. And then even with that too, though. Yeah, they found his body 11 <laughs> miles from where camp was. With that too, though, and and all this stuff, you know, like you got, you know, if if I lose something in my car, I'm gonna look in the car for it. If I lose something in a room, I'm gonna look in that room for it. You know, you're not gonna really go further, much further outside of a certain radius because that's how far logically somebody can get yeah you know so so this one you know we kind of talked about it and 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 you're more geared towards thinking that this guy had hypothermia and just kind of you know and i am because i mean the boot thing is weird some of the belongings that that's the weird factor i 100 percent agree on that the being out in the middle of nowhere and having shed items Textbook. To me, yeah, that, that, that screams hypothermia. Mm-hmm. Textbook. And people are like, oh, he couldn't have gone that far? Man, there's so many cases of people having hypothermia and just going. They're out of their mind at that point. They're like, oh, you couldn't do that. The body can do so much stuff that everybody's like, you can't do that. All these ultra marathon runners, this zip tie is just... Mad uh, I, I it's driving me insane. There. Yeah, like, I don't know why it's should there. Should I try to tighten it up a little bit? Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, Maybe it won't swing. I'll go get some clippers real quick. Um, but I, I, I can – that that one's – Just don't move your head anymore. Yeah, stop moving uh, your head. Stay still. <laughs> Hello, my name is Austin. I am here with Stormwater Creek Podcast to talk to you. I like my friends. Do you? Yes. Um, and by the end so, of the podcast for Halloween special, uh, Awesome revealed himself to be a robot. <laughs> a robot. A robot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know. The, the the distance and all that that they play is weird. Eh, not weird to me. The other stuff, still weird. Not negating that. But the, the, the discombobulation, I can completely write that off. The The only thing that, like, I don't disagree with you. Up to the fact of the time frame. Like, the time frame w- w- is what was weird to me. Like, nine months afterwards, you find his backpack and stuff there, and everything's set out there, and, like, no one really found that. Like, the like what? how does a dog's not track? Right, yeah, we talked about it, and it's very... Sure. It's strange, you know, like, yeah, that like, things like, have popped up now. That Hypothermia started- is what, what I thought it was, for sure, but, like, the shadows in the corners of my uh, I think anybody's skeptical mind I, I don't know if that's not skeptical that's the I'm opposite sure. of that I think, no, I think no. anybody it, has that like, anybody has that part of their mind yeah. that wants to be creative with things yeah right exactly and, 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 and people and, like and, weird and, stuff for sure oh, I, I love I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. lo- oh. I love this crap and I want to think that oh yeah this is, this like, is like, a cre- that's why I, I initially I, like I said I watched this I was like you guys gotta watch this like I want to talk about like, it I, <clears throat> like I love ancient aliens just because it's so stupidly like aliens. Yeah, like and I and I use that. I was waiting. I was I was like, man, Austin, have you have you have you watched it yet? Because I was like, I had that. Like, I was thinking in my head up. earlier, but I was I drinking yeah, a beer. Didn't <clears throat> aliens. aliens. They get I'm not all saying over it's aliens, place. but it's aliens. <laughs> they get all over the place in this documentary, and the, and the you know that that case, you know, you know they they recovered body, they they found belongings. They, Did they know. ever say what state? The body, the, the remains it was, it was were skeletal remains. So they, they said skeletal remains, but like they were they that, like? They said it was a femur and a skull, and they were. It was scattered, yeah. and they but they were pristine bleach white. Yes, yeah. bleach Same. white bones. They weren't able to determine, of course, any kind of cause of death. Um, and that and that was kind of that with that case. And they never said so this like is it right here whether they could see like whether animals had chewed chewed yeah. on them. You know, Nothing. like like that, that. That's what I mean. Like. Which like, that is kind of weird too. Yeah, like if no animals found it, I don't like know. How does that work? I don't know, cause how many random bones have I picked up, and we've looked at skulls and stuff we found that have never been chewed on. When you're at high elevations, we don't have all the stuff we have down here. I don't want to say it's aliens, but I want to say it's aliens. Holy bro, <laughs> that's where I'm at on all this. Stop ruining my buzz. I'm not knocking it. That's a, the, the I did, I the bl- first thing it, I thought of, for, and and it, I mean, we played it earlier, but like the first thing I thought of when they're like, oh yeah, um, FBI showed up. 
after that first case, I'm like, it's Molly and Scolder. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 And he touched my heart. <laughs> what? It's, it's Mulder and Scully. <laughs> Scolder and Molly? Yeah. Yes. It's Terrence and Philip. <laughs> ah, Terrence. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go have a treasure. <laughs> oh, my God. Um. The, the final one, and I don't have the audio clip, and I kind of searched for it. And this is one that I, I don't think I'd want to put on the podcast, though, just because I want people to watch this document and hear it. And it's and I feel like it, it can be a quick – it's a quick little story. Um, these are the guys in, in New Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. And they they go out. It's right where I turkey hunted one year, too. They find oh, – We were watching it. I was like, oh, sweet Jesus, I've turkey <laughs> hunted right there. <laughs> They create their own little camp out there. They find a good hunting camp. They're like, and they go back yearly and they hunt there. And oh, oh no, that one. That is not. That New was Mexico. that was California. Was that, that was California? California? That was California. And that yeah. one. The was, New Mexico that, one. Uh, they set up that? real quick. They set up. Oh, camp. that was the guy. Dude came in late to hunt one night. Yes. Walked 150 hundred yards. yards gone. And there was zero. And never he had a limp. And, he had a limp. Yeah, yeah he, he hurt his himself. Deal. He fell in a yes. gopher hole. I got wrong. Yeah. Sprained his ankle that week. Sprained his ankle. But and even his wife, like the dude talked to his wife, and he was like, "Is this the kind of dude that would, if you saw an animal, like a few hundred yards him? off, would he go track him?" And she's like, "No, no. like God, he no. he, he hates quick, like, he hates no. walking." Yeah, and the he way she answered walking. it, what like she answered it like like Grinch just did, like, "No, no. that's like, that's a wife answer." Like yeah. I know my husband. Yeah, he, he ain't walking. He for ain't nothing. fucking doing that. That, yeah. that was the New bastard. Mexico case. <laughs> that one. That one's essentially that. You know, they they yeah. same thing. Shots fired in the air. The search parties, everything, never came, find him. His buddies came back to the, the, the truck, and it was right at, like, normal time when people would go just back. Just after dark, yeah. Just, yeah, just, just right at, like, and uh, he wasn't there, and they were like, oh, like, he's just down there, and they went to go look for him. He made a little ground blind, little makeshift natural ground blind, and there was no sign of his stuff Not there. Not a bow. He had a handgun he carried, yeah. like, zero. Nothing. All right, and so do we remember where going? it was in California? Nowhere. Where are you going? Nowhere. Do what? Do, do you guys remember where it was in California? Sierra Nevadas. No? Um, yeah. They, they, yeah. Uh, it was almost to Yosemite, in between Yosemite yes, it was very and close to Yosemite. Uh, what 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 else was it? Um, guys, it's pronounced Yosemite. Uh. That one. You don't say you you don't say Yosemite Sam. You say Yosemite Sam. Yosemite. What in tarnation? <laughs> uh oh. Max heard something. His mom is loving uh, on the new pup. See, is she right? cheating on you? I got your tail. Yeah, side story. Austin Lauren got a uh, Max 2.0. That's true. Well, I wouldn't. Say it's it's Max 1.5. It's Max. Max Light. point seven five. <laughs> point point seven five. There we go. <laughs> uh. I was going to say it's Max Light. <laughs> yeah, Max Light. L-I-T-E. This is the full flavor original this, right yeah. here. Max is painted cans. <laughs> this is a yellow belly right here. That's Coors Light. <laughs> Sierra Camp member. They called Sierra Camp. It was eight miles yeah. from anything normal. They are like, you, yeah. know, you didn't find this. Yeah, yeah they, 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 they horse train in with, like, packs. When he, and they did this yearly, and, you know, not, I don't – they didn't mention it until later. We mention it now. They they said, you, know, "You cannot find this." And what four years ago, the national Sur- national uh, uh, national forest service found it and told them to take down this like they had a stove shelter and stove yeah. they built there. I made them take down the shelter, which was built out of like logs and stuff. Yes, yeah, which is interesting. But it kind of looks a little crude. It was, it was, but it, I mean, apparently it worked. The the, the weirdest thing it. to me is that they had like this big log door it was for the door yeah that chain clo- like that like it, it bolts cable, closed yeah. like yeah the ca- cable that's where they they said cable closed i'm like why would Eight you need that the and then like elevation right yeah. they they preface with some of that and you're like yeah. why the hell do you need to do that for? yeah like what are you doing you know like you afraid someone's gonna get I you out know, here man here's the deal weird stuff happens i'm like well we're done here yeah, these dudes and, keep on going back. Yeah, and now they're tent camping there still annually. I'm like, and homie nah, got bro. the recording. Yeah, that's when homie got the recording. Um, and 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 we're not gonna play it. I don't want to play it. I want you guys to watch the documentary. Yeah, you should. Watch and I this. want you to hear this. Um, it is 
unlike anything I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, if I were in the woods and I heard this noise, I would shit my pants. Yeah. And I would immediately say, we have to get the fuck out of here. Like, I, I'm and not, no bullshit about it. It makes me uncomfortable talking about it. Kind yeah. of. It and imagine, does. Yeah. Friday. That, well, that's, that's what I was talking about. Like Friday night by myself watching this, that shit, like, when you want, and you get the chills kind of. You were sitting yeah. 50 yards I'm, from a house. I'm kind of getting the chills from it right now, like, thinking totally. about it. Like, dude, it's it's a very unsettling noise. It is. And the, and the situation, and they even preface this, this part of the documentary of – there's video and there's audio to support these claims. Otherwise, these wouldn't be on our radar. Yes, he the, Doug Polite like, in the documentary puts this in here. Yeah, he basically says like, I would, I get it. I would call bullshit. Also, is what that means in layman's terms. They, uh, but they still go back and hunt. Yeah, because they, they said that they didn't even hunt. They just go back and camp. Like yeah, that. The, the old timer oh. that he kind of interviews. Had and, he quit hunting in like 1970 or something, but still goes back. Yep. But that that one that's about as much as we can say about that one. I I, I is that all, all you want to say? Because like that think, one that one was like I was I was gonna like nail it home with that one. Oh, I mean, like, I know. Add I mean, more if, if by you, all means. If, if, I just I feel like I I want to not give a whole yeah, no, bunch of because I want if, people to watch it because it's very it's a very interesting documentary. I, I don't I don't disagree with that. Like I that's what I was saying. Like I I kind of wanted to, but it was one of the sayings like just to go with what you were saying about like you know and Grinch as well saying it. Like hearing that stuff, I put myself when I was talking about hearing things in the woods earlier and being in a tree stand and like you hear something, you're like, what's that? Like if I was in a tree stand and heard this stuff, I would be scared shitless. For sure. Like it. it no it, doubt about it. I don't care. And, and I have been in the woods and heard weird noise, heard, you know, I've been where mountain lions are at and you hear the, the. The, Do you want me to play the audio? Or the, no. The the, okay. the the craziness of a mountain lion, like I'm sorry to the people who want to hear it, who are roaring. right now just play the damn thing. But no, watch the documentary. You will hear it, and you will know what we're talking about. And hearing that, like, if that's actually something, and being out that far, like they even say it, they were like, they gave it to a a specialist, uh, for he's a what, he's what, a cryptozoologist. Yeah, cryptozoologist. And, at, you know, obviously, you know, study of cryptids, you know, um, and the, the best thing I can describe it as guys who, who study things um, that you think are fake, but people think are real. Yeah. Like creature, like Bigfoot, Sasquatch things, Mothman, yep. any of that weird paranormal sort of. And they gave the audio to an audio yeah. specialist. Yeah. And that, he said there was no evidence of overlaying or editing. No. Yeah. That, that, said, that, that's where I was going. Yeah. Like the audio specialist. He said no bullshit. Yeah. Said, this is no bullshit. This is a real recording. Okay. Cause like, and the other thing is where they're at so far out. Like, if someone's gonna screw with somebody, this is not a place. Like, you would have to be not the farm. so but dedicated. If somebody did something like that out there, then they did a good job. Well, not just that, but like, if you were gonna do that, like the dedication, like not even how good of a job you did, the dedication to go. What was eight thousand miles of elevate or eight thousand feet of elevation? We want to talk about dedication, change. dude. I have a mullet right now. You yeah. know what I'm saying, <laughs> I'm dedicated. But With the, headphones on, you actually look like a respectful human. Earlier, he looked, yeah. <laughs> earlier, he looked back, and I was like, boom! Like, he looked over the side, and I was like, yes! Like, I'm like, oh, man, we, we're doing business stuff right now. Like, everything has to be serious. He looked over the side, That'll and I'm like, we're be partying! Like, the cover for this episode is I'll just Photoshop me as, like, some kind of monster with a mullet. <laughs> oh, what were you saying? I can't, I lost everything. Oh, the mullet, just, the yeah, mullet took it out of you, man. Just everything about, like, the dedication of someone to go that far in the woods with, did you say 8,000 8, 8, feet of elevation eight change? 8 miles, 4,000 feet. Yeah, eight, 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 sorry, I got that backwards in. But, like, to do that, to hike out there with some sort of equipment that would make that, like, the volume that they got out of that in the time that it happened, you would... You'd have to be pretty dedicated. Like, you'd need a few horses, and you'd need to guide them back there, and you know, and then not to like to do something like that to mess with people, and not eventually like if your buddies to know where that camp was, if it was your buddies, to like all of a sudden like you know you'd be at the bar with them, and then be like, all of a sudden play it over the jukebox and be like, 
Remember when y'all guys were fucking scared of this got shit? Got you, bitch. Got you. Like, you know, like, there has to be a got you in something like that. Huge, a got you moment. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's, I mean, that that's not all they really talk about in the documentary. And I'm sure the book's going to have more. And, and I honestly, I think I might buy the book and read it because I'm just, uh, you know, pure curiosity. That documentary, I, I'm, I'm glad you guys watched it. Yeah, man, it, it got me, you know, and it's going to probably give me nightmares. Whatever. <laughs> um it's part of it. But, uh, I mean, for anyone, uh, you know, obviously, if you stuck around this long to kind of, you know, hang out with us, watch the documentary. I, I, I ho- please, please send us a message on Instagram. Shoot us emails. It's, you know, our first name at stormwatercreek.com. Like, I want to hear what you think about it. Like, we will touch on this again if, like, enough of you guys, you know, want to talk about it. You know, this is to me pretty interesting stuff and it's not a normal thing we normally talk about you know obviously it's hunting related but you know the weird missing possibly paranormal unexplained shit is not you know uh, something we dive into normally so i'm curious sure. if anyone else has got any kind of opinion or idea about it uh, i i uh yeah i give the documentary a, a good eight and a half out of ten yeah and i'm the first guy to be like Kick rocks. Skeptical this about is shit. Dumb. Yeah, you know. But this one was like, huh? I'm not. We will tell you. We we had the idea to to do urban exploring, but like ghost hunting, where I'm like freaked out and he's just laughing at me the whole time because he doesn't believe that shit. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 this is this is something I think. I mean, and you said it, you know about you too. You know, I think if you're skeptical about this kind of shit, you could watch this and it kind of make you go like, oh, that's kind of weird, and you will want to research more and you want to read up about things. Um, you know, yeah, do I, weird do I th- side. Uh, here's what I'm skeptical about is like Bigfoot and sightings of weird things and, you know, Loch Ness Monster and whatever else. Like pff, paranormal shit, I'm not super skeptical about because I just think with you, with the vastness of the universe, to believe that we're the only intelligent beings out there is unintelligent in itself. Yeah. I'm not well, saying aliens probably don't uh, roll up their windows and lock their doors. They roll past Earth right now. <laughs> All right, but, everybody, put on your foil hats. We're getting into it now. Yeah, here it goes. Storm, Buckle up, Buttercup. Stormwater That's Creek all. Conspiracy Theories 101. Don't you start me on Conspiracy Alien theories. Challenge. <laughs> Alien Challenge. <laughs> oh, where's Abe? Alien Challenge. <laughs> hey, I will say, though, we won the Abe Challenge. We made it through a whole podcast without making fun of Abe because he's not here. <laughs> He doesn't always need to be made fun of. Well, Just sometimes here. he does. I, to tell you the truth, though, I'm bummed that he didn't make it. Of course. Because I would have loved to have heard his point of view on this stuff. Yeah. Because I feel like he'd be, like, super freaked out of it. Like, oh, my God, there's like aliens. Ah! That's Abe. That's my impression of Abe. Yeah, that that's a pretty good impression. I think so. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyways. You know, most of the stuff, like, not even that it's – like thinking it's aliens, weird stuff did happen in these things, and my whole point of view on it is, I'm always curious of what actually happened. Like you're talking about the Loch Ness monster. Everybody wants to like know. if anyone want to know, you want an answer. Everybody wants answers for sure. Well, like one of my favorite River Monster episodes with Jeremy Wade was uh, good. good show. He 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 did one on the Loch Ness monster, and it was super interesting. I would love and to like, fish with that guy. Oh. Hell yeah. That like dude. Ultimate angler right there. Yeah. For sure. Dude, dude knows his shit. But like. That he does. And he's super English because his teeth are so bad. Yeah. <laughs> but doesn't care. Yeah. He can catch he's got, fish. And he's got malaria like seven times or something <laughs> like that. Shit will buff out. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, people. We got to go cut up a pig. Shoot us some messages. Shoot us some emails. Tell us what you think. Give us some opinions. We will uh, we'll we'll touch on it again in, in a future episode. Oh. Um, send us some cases if you find something cool that we well, did not yeah, talk, we'll talk about. Talk about this again. I mean, for we sure. We thought it'd be a fun or, new Halloween episode. Jared came with the idea. Good job, buddy. Or or send us a. Uh, I I wish I could get the the voice from the dude from Tales from the Crypt, little skeleton dude, to give <laughs> us an intro for this episode. <laughs> I can't. Even, I can't. I can't. That yeah, I don't know. I don't know that voice. Normally, I'm good at voices. I can't do his for sure. Well, but yeah, I'll figure something out. I'll if, find it, a if any of all had like a weird experience in the woods, tell us that one too. I'd like to hear some some weird experiences in the woods. I wouldn't. No. Well, I had a weird experience, kind of in the woods on Sunday morning. 
I had to poop. So poop in the and woods. on that note, <laughs> thanks for down. joining, guys. Happy Halloween. Storm on a Creek is the best. Grinch, the captain, Abe, the helper, Jordan, the problem solver. I hope you like Stormwater Creek. Stormwater Creek.